Have you seen online all the rage, like things like um, pancake cereal? I think we should do stuffing cereal. Tiny cubes of stuffing like this, seared up in a bowl with gravy. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> it's Sola here, and I'm gonna show you how to do some fun stuff with your leftover stuffing. Stuffing for me is the best, it's the ultimate Thanksgiving leftover because it's just bread with seasoning in it. And now we're gonna take that bumped up bread and do some cool stuff with it. We're gonna make a sandwich, a soup, and a salad. I mean, you could make all three of these and really like go ham. Just really like indulge yourself in all of this stuff in glory. Or just make one. That's probably what most people will do. Dumpling soup. I actually think this might be the best out of the three. If you make one thing, this is the one you should make. It's a really good way to stretch your leftovers. You could feed a whole family with this with just your carcass and a couple cups of stuffing. We're gonna have a lot of veggies in here, like a lot of veggies, like all of this kale. And then the fun thing is we're gonna transform our leftover stuffing into dumplings. Oh. It's so amazing. It feels really hearty and wholesome, especially after having like a bunch of pies for breakfast probably. So I'm gonna cook my bone broth in a pressure cooker. It just cooks everything really quickly, but if you don't have a pressure cooker, you can also do that on a stove top. It's gonna take maybe like three times the amount of time and you're gonna have to keep an eye on it and keep adding water, but it'll be fine. It'll still be delicious. I threw in a couple of thigh bones and the neck bone. Well, you can see there's still a good bit of meat on here and the bones are gonna have a lot of flavor. I like to do pieces like about this big, so they just fit snugly in there. Don't like overthink it, you know? We're just making it smaller. Oh yeah, look at that. So satisfying, cracking in the bones. Everything like tucks into there real tight. I'm also gonna add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. It, the apple cider vinegar is supposed to help pull out the minerals and you know, good stuff that's in the bones. I don't know if that's true, but I've read it. You're supposed to do it, so I just do it. We're gonna cover this with two and a half quarts of water. I don't really like to put any vegetables or anything in there because we're gonna have so many veggies in our soup that I think this is gonna be solid. Soup's on. Okay, so we're gonna start cooking our soup. Okay, we're gonna start by melting a little bit of butter. And then here I've got one onion, a one pound of sweet potatoes peeled and diced. We're gonna cook it covered, uncovering it occasionally to give it a stir, but we really want it to steam and soften. While that happens, we're gonna prep our kale. These are already washed, so we're just gonna strip it and then cut it into little pieces that'll fit on your spoon. This is, this is the same kale that is why I cut off my finger. My thumb is like this, because I cut myself. It's the worst, it's the worst, because every time I do something, you know, it just, it just hurts a little bit. So it's like I don't have a thumb on this hand. This is where the disaster struck, exactly like this. Just kind of bundle it up and then, you know, go for like one inch bits. I normally like to do the chop and look at the camera, but now I, I, I just don't feel safe. Now I have to look at where I'm chopping. A little more info, the night I made the kale salad and cut off my thumb was also because I was having some wine, maybe relaxing too much, you know? I didn't have all my wits about me. This has nicely sweated down, and I'm gonna add four cloves of chopped garlic. I like a lot of garlic. I think you could even do a little more garlic. Got a half a teaspoon of chili flakes. I like a little bit of heat. I think it's a really nice balance to the sweet potato. And now all the kale is going in. Oh, kale. I know, it looks like so much kale. It's not, it's totally not. We just wanna wilt this down just slightly. We're gonna cook this for just a couple of minutes. We're like almost done. This soup is almost done. That's how easy this soup is. Okay, so look, check it out. I've cooked this kale for two minutes. It's gone from looking unreasonable to maybe we need more kale. Isn't that crazy? All right, now it's time to add our bone broth that we just made. Look at how like golden that is. Great. We're gonna do two quarts. You don't need to be precise, it's soup, it'll be okay. Gonna add a little more salt and pepper at this point, and we're gonna cook it partially covered for about 20 minutes. We wanna make sure the sweet potato gets cooked through Kale is nice and tender. In the meantime, we will work on our dumplings. So here I have some leftover stuffing. So we're gonna do a third of a cup of our bone broth. This is just to really make sure we have nice moist dumplings and it helps break it all down really well. Okay, so I'm gonna smash it. I wanna make sure there's no big chunks. So we're mushing it around. And now we're gonna just add a couple of eggs, a little baking powder and flour, and that's it. And we have our dumpling batter. 
did it. So my soup has been simmering away. The kale is nice and tender. The sweet potatoes are nice and tender. We want to knock this down to a very gentle simmer. Now we're gonna add our dumplings. I like them big. I like a hunky dumpling, you know, like a matzo ball. If you want them smaller, go smaller. Just totally do, do it however you like. If you have like one of those ice cream scoops, that's even better, just like scoop them right into the thing. Just keep an eye on it, you know, if they're bigger, they're gonna take a little longer to cook. Okay, now we're gonna cook this covered for about 15 minutes. They're gonna poof up a little bit, get really nice and tender, and then serve it up. Soup. And look at how plump they are. They're super plump, they're plumplings. If you give it a poke, you can tell they're nice and firm. It's also good to just get in there and make sure that it's coming out clean. These are ready to go. Ladling it up. I don't have a ladle. <laughs> I should get a ladle, but I have this. It gets in there, it scoops for me. Here is my turkey dumpling soup. They, these are not the prettiest dumps, they're not. You know what you're getting instead of pretty? You're getting very tender, very light. Look at how my spoon just like melts right into it. The dumpling is so tender and so creamy. And then the broth is really nice and light. And I just love how many veggies are in there. It's just like a really nice light way to use up your leftovers. And look at this, we got this nice hearty bowl of soup. Mmm, mmm, mmm. The next dish is a stuffing panzanella. Panzanella is a bread salad. You know how you put croutons in a salad? It's like that, but the croutons are like one of the vegetables. <laughs> so it's great because the bread soaks up all the dressing. It's really one of my favorite salads because, you know, it's like, it's just an excuse to eat bread. I think I've made it clear that I'm a big fan of bread. Okay, so yesterday I pressed my stuffing into this loaf pan. Hello, it's yesterday and I'm going to press my stuffing for my panzanella. This is easier to do when your stuffing is warm. If you don't have another loaf pan, get in there with your hands or the back of a measuring cup and really smush it down before you chill it. And then we're gonna cut this up into cubes, fry it in the skillet, and it will be the bread part of our panzanella. But better, because it's stuffing. All right, so we're gonna start by making the vinaigrette. I'm gonna toast these pepitas in a little bit of olive oil until they get nice and puffy and brown. I love pepitas, but untoasted pepitas are just, they're just terrible. Don't waste your time with that. And the nice thing is the pepitas are gonna kind of flavor this oil, so we get a nice like nuttiness in our olive oil too that's gonna dress everything. So here we are. They are nice and golden, they're popping. We're gonna get the base of our dressing whisk whisked up and then scrape this oil right into there. This is the canned kind, but use whatever cranberry sauce you have. And then to that we are gonna add a little bit of mustard and apple cider vinegar. My thought process with this is I wanted a honey mustard kind of dressing, but make it cranberry, because it's Thanksgiving, right? I'm gonna scrape in all these pepitas and all of this nice oil that's now flavored with the pepitas. And we're gonna season it up with salt and pepper and that's our dressing. Look at that. Doesn't that look good already? So this salad, I've got, I want it to be like really light and refreshing. So we're gonna have a mix of crunchy veg, leafy veg, and some pear. I didn't wanna get too specific with the vegetables because I want you to be able to use what you have. Since these things are a little bit heartier, we can kind of get in there without bruising anything. And then we're gonna add our crisp tender lettuces. You can use a mix of whatever you've got. This, the, the, the grocery store called this fall mix. I don't know why. It just looks like some arugula and spinach. You know, this is actually how I like to set up my salad a lot. The dressed heavy stuff at the bottom, put the leafy stuff on top and then throw it in the fridge. And then right before serving, tossy toss. Okay, so we're gonna cook our stuffing cubes. It's really important that the pan is good and hot. Otherwise your stuffing's gonna stick and fall apart and it'll just be a mess. But you know, even if it sticks and falls apart, it'll still be tasty. So you want like one inch cubes. So they're good like forkable sizes, nothing huge. What a fun way to eat stuffing, right? Sizzle. So we know we are up to temp. See how brown that is? The stuffing has sucked up a lot of oil though. I'm gonna hit it with another quick little drizzle of oil so there's enough to brown it. So this is another reason why there's not a whole lot of olive oil in our dressing because the stuffing cubes are gonna be very rich and add a lot of fat. So that's why I wanted to keep the dressing a little bit brighter, lighter. Look at these colors. Doesn't this look like fall, huh? I'm into it. 
So for this toss, I'm gonna use my hands because I do not wanna bruise our lettuces, but I wanna make sure we get everything nicely coated in that dressing. Time to place our stuffing cubes. This is definitely a salad, like as soon as you put the cubes on, get in there and eat it, because they are warm and it's gonna make everything kinda get a little wilty. But I think it's a really nice like eating experience. Going back and forth between a hot bite and a cold bite. All right, salad, stuffing, panzanella. All right, let's get in here. I want to bite with everything. I think my favorite part about the salad is all the textures. The stuffing, crunky on the outside, really creamy on the inside because we compacted it. This is giving me all the hol holiday vibes with the stuffing and the cranberry sauce. But like in a lighter way, in a way that I want to eat like on a Wednesday night, that's good. It's crunchy. It's creamy. It's stuffing panzanella. Now I'm going to show you how to make a leftover turkey club. There's a way to enhance every single leftover so that you really, it really shines in your sandwich. And I think that this is the ultimate, ultimate turkey sandwich. I like to start with the cranberry mayo. It's just equal parts cranberry and mayo, easy peasy. You really need the cranberry mayo to like cut all the richness that's going on. Layer one complete. I like to take care of my white and dark meat turkey in like two different ways. For the breast, I like to slice it and we're gonna warm this up in a little bit of butter. You don't need to go crazy on each layer because there's a lot of layers. Really like having a veg in here. So Brussels sprout, sweet potato, maybe a scoop of green bean casserole. You know, you gotta freshen it up, lighten it up. Now it's time for the stuffing layer. So yesterday I showed you, I pressed my stuffing to get this nice slab of stuffing. To make this like really work out perfectly, you wanna try and find bread that's like as square as possible and can kind of be about the size that you're gonna cut your stuffing. Take a look at that slab. Just like with the panzanella, it's gonna be fast. It's gonna be in, sizzle, brown, flip, out. Otherwise, it's gonna fall apart. It's gonna be nice and crusty, nice and custardy in the middle. It's like the perfect layer to your sandwich. Oh yeah, there we go. And now, our dark meat. The dark meat I've shredded, and I'm gonna actually warm that up in some gravy. Sops into the, the stuffing instead of onto the bread. That's why I do the buttery turkey on the other layer. I thought this through. I thought this through, I have a plan. Now, since we've got gravy here, next is our mashed potatoes. So we're just gonna get a nice even layer of our mash here, and then we're ready to close her up. I think the true genius in this sandwich, besides the stuffing layer, is treating the turkey in two different ways. White and dark meat is very different. You know, it's like when you have children, you don't treat them the same. They're individuals. Okay, now we close, we close. This is always like thrilling. You must be swift, you must move with confidence. There we go. There's our epic, epic Thanksgiving leftover sandwich. This is a messy sandwich. This is a sandwich you eat alone. You don't eat this sandwich with an audience. <laughs> I mean, it's so good. It's so messy, but who cares? I would rather eat my Thanksgiving food actually like this, in messy sandwich form. And then you get every bite has everything you want. It's perfect. Hmm? Hmm? Thanks for watching me make stuff with stuffing. You can find all three of these recipes on NYT Cooking. Check them out, and uh, happy after Thanksgiving. You know, I feel like I've mentioned this before, but every single video that I've ever done, ever, for anybody, I've forgotten one ingredient and nothing changed today. I was, we're done, I changed, we're cleaned up, and I just realized I forgot to add the turkey into the soup. So before dropping in the dumps, after you've done your final seasoning, you're supposed to put the turkey, cubed up turkey, into the soup. I forgot it, and it was still totally delicious. We ate it, didn't miss it, but if you've got turkey around, throw it in the soup. It'll be even better.